Right, hi folks, this is Mike, PC31, the Vinyl Policeman, and i um, very pleased on this video to be able to bring in a couple of really good chums of mine, Jacob Rosdale and Matt Jensen. Uh, Jacob and Matt have got a terrific channel called Track vs. VS Track, and what I'll do is I'll put a link down below so you can get to their videos. They have done um, a heck of a lot on many different artists, Beatles, who kinks lots and lots of different ones they kindly asked me to join them we did a collaboration on three videos where we compared um some arista albums the whole basis of this video is um we're going to summarize some of the work we've done before i'll, I'll put a link into those three videos we've done on the kinks albums so that because we went into quite a lot of details with those but the um the purpose of today's video is we're going to actually rank the six albums from the Kinks Arista years. And the Kinks went through lots of different periods. And the Arista years is when they produced six studio albums. They also produced a live album, which we're not going to rank, one for their own. But um, we're going to rank the six studio albums, which go from 77 through to 1984. What we're also going to do to add to the fun is we're going to pick two tracks from each of those albums which will, which will effectively make up our individual best of the Arista Years albums. So are we okay with that, guys? I'm ready. Perfect. Good. Okay. And as I say, I'll put all the, link in, all the links into uh, Jacob and Matt as well, because um, as I say, they've got some terrific videos up there. So, okay, without further ado, ju just to say a tiny bit more about the Arista Years. So the Kinks have just come out in the mid-70s, of their theatrical experimentation period. Um, didn't sell very many records at all. Um, quite a, quite around well-respected period, but not great sales. So they were released by RCA in 1976. Same time, same year, Clive Davis, the very influential Clive Davis of Arista Records, signed up the Kinks because he saw a lot of potential on the Schoolboys in Disgrace album. Um, a really rocked up album and he wanted more of that for Arista but he, there was a real focus there was a real brief for Ray Davis and the gang where um, Clive Davis wanted to actually review the demos with Ray Davis um, and he wanted to approve them effectively and he wanted them to be very very radio friendly so we hint, we entered this whole period of six Arista albums so without further ado um, Jacob what is your sixth all right so this i did enjoy album. i What's do enjoy your... all of these albums uh this con this little debate we had back and forth um uh, over the three previous videos was very fruitful I, I grew to love maybe through um just being drilled into my brain i grew to love all these albums that said my bottom one is i think i believe Yes, I just want to confirm. Uh, State of Confusion, which was their second to last Arista album. How I came up with my ranking, uh, I kind of backwards engineered it from our greatest hits. Uh, we talked about we're going to pick two tracks from each of these albums to constitute our greatest hits. And if it was hard for me to pick two tracks, uh, it got higher on the list. And if it was hard to pick two songs that I would choose to save, um, Makes sense. went to the bottom. So, and I don't love Come Dancing or um, uh, Don't Forget to Dance as much as, as Matt does. So my two tracks I'm choosing to save from State of Confusion are the title track, State of Confusion, and Heart of Gold. Two kind of like quirky, they definitely sound like they're part of the 80s pop uh, landscape but um still an album i like but it is on the bottom of my pile okay and state of confusion was the was the fifth of the sixth albums that was 1983 so okay and yours matt yeah uh, i echo a lot of the sentiments that jacob said i uh, really enjoyed all six of these albums but i felt like their sixth arista album word of mouth was just the weakest um and you know having looked at some websites like rateyourmusic.com and various other websites i feel like that's probably the popular pick but um for my money 
the best two songs on here would be, um, I would say, uh, Living on a Thin Line, the Dave Davis song, and then Do It Again, I think is just a fantastic song. Uh, maybe one of the best kink songs of the Arista years. Um, but yeah, those, those would be the two that I would go for if I were to make a greatest hits and have word of mouth represented. So this is now, my- now, I need, need to be pedantic. We can't call it a greatest hits album. No, <laughs> these best, aren't best the hits. Best. This is the best of. Yeah. So best I might have screwed up earlier. But. <laughs> yeah. That's right. No. Yeah. 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 Quite, quite right, because um, Jacob's already dumped the two singles off the first month's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Just to be that clear, like it's not a time capsule of, yeah, it's personal favorites. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, and, and word of mouth was, was the last album, as we know, of the Arista period before, before they moved away from that. Okay. So my number six, I do agree with someone. Is it me? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> State of confusion. Um, again, agree with you guys that, I mean, I like the Arista period. I, I like the Arista albums, but uh, some, some albums are definitely a lot stronger than others. Uh, the two tracks I chose from this one, and I kind of did struggle a bit because there are tracks on there that are just okay for me, but I've been pretty obvious with this one, and I have gone for um, Don't Forget to Dance and um, Come Dancing. Yeah. yeah. Truly, greatest hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come Dance, Don't Forget <laughs> to Dance. And um, I think Come Dancing for me, where I play in a King's Tribute band, it's bread and butter. It's in the middle of the set. People love it. So it's kind of, I just couldn't leave that one alone. And I do like the track. And Don't Forget to Dance, I think, is is another one, which um, it's, they're not great tracks. I mean, great Kings tracks, but on this album, they're the ones that which stick out. State of Confusion would have been my third one if we were allowed that. But this is interesting enough. State of Confusion was the last Kings album, which um, Mick Avery was on was was played drums on every single track, but um, okay, stay confusion. So here we go. All right, if I'm okay. back up, okay. I'm gonna so I'm gonna... should we swing to to Matt now? Okay. Oh yeah, let's do that. Matt yeah. now, let's mix it up with yeah. Matt. So Matt, your number five. My number five. So I guess we're gonna knock this one off the board now. <laughs> yeah, state of, state of confusion. It was pretty close between this and word of mouth. Um, but I felt like the two songs that I'm going to pick, I preferred, I mean, other than do it again, I think I preferred uh, the song state of confusion over living on a thin line. I just think that's such a banger, such an excellent song. And the second song was a little bit more challenging to go with. Um, I thought about come dancing. I thought about don't forget to dance, but I ended up going with a definite maybe. I think it's a real dark horse track, a lot of great energy. And uh I think I was the only one that picked that song when we did the track versus tracks between these two albums because it was against the song Word of Mouth, the title track of the other album. But I just think it's a fantastic song. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a popular one track. Th it's definitely a popular track, that one. Okay. Yeah. 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 Great one two punch to start the album. So those would yeah. be the two songs I would include in our best of. So, yeah. okay. Data Confusion is my number five. Okay. And by the way, folks, behind me is the chronological order of the Arista years. So starting with Sleepwalker, going through to word of mouth being the last one so these are the, these are the ones that um we're looking at sorry okay jacob so you're oh. number five so i'm following up matt uh ah. with word of mouth yeah it was a close one um and this is the one that gets the vote for ugliest cover art as i <laughs> mentioned in, in our video it's it's awful it's, it's hideous dreadful. <laughs> um and yeah living on a thin line is a great song i i, I may have reg may, may regret leaving that off uh and i'm i'm a fatalist like if it's off my list i'm never going to hear it again that's how i make these calls um <laughs> uh sold me out i believe is the old i like i might have been the only one who really liked sold me out i thought it was a pretty good pop punk song um and so i'm saving that and i'm saving saving summer's gone uh, which I compared to the news, but uh, Mike was like, oh, that's that's the boss. So yeah, um, yeah two funny. tracks I like on this, and it was just slightly harder to pick those songs than it was on um, State of Confusion. So that's where it had the edge there. Okay. What was your number five? Right. So my number five, so a bit, bit of a deviation from you two guys now. 
Um, and it is low budget. And the, the reason for running low budget is it's really funny. When we started this exercise and when I did a ranking about five, six months ago now, this one actually figured quite high. But I actually find this quite a soulless album now. Mm -hmm. I, th I think whereas kind of the first two Arista albums was with Sleepwalker and Misfits, for example, um, I think they've got a lot of warmth to them. The third album, I think Clive Davis must have said, to, to Ray Davis, I really want me some stadium anthems now. Yes. Let's let's get the really, really big guitars out. And um, I think it's, it's partially achieved. I mean, Attitude, obviously, a, a blaster to start with. Catch Me Now and Fall in the Jumping Jack Flash Shock Line. Um, pressure. Wish I Could Fly Like Superman was obviously a single. Low Budget. Gun on the Gas, I've got a soft spot for. The Blues, the blues Riff. So there's things on there like all these albums that I do like, and um, I can play this album quite merrily. But but for me, as I say, I find it a little bit little bit soulless. Um, it's one which they recorded at the Power Station and Blue Rock in New York. So I think from the big arena, the big rock thing, probably maybe that had some influence to it. Um, but for me, that's my number five. The two tracks I would put on my best of would be Superman and would be Low Budget. So, okay. So, Jacob, your number four. My number four. Oh, I have a feeling it's going to be higher on many of yours, but maybe not. It's uh, Misfits, which uh, the second album of the Arista years. And uh, the songs I am choosing to save uh, is the title track, which when we did a face off, I don't think I picked it, but it was against another track I really liked. And it's a song that Matt has brought up multiple times on our videos. And so uh, I've listened to it with fresh ears. And I'm like, I really do love the chorus of uh, Misfits. And it does set a template that they re return to again and again. Uh, and the other one was Rock and Roll Fantasy, which is a, a great song. But there are several good songs on here. But um, the Rock and Roll Fantasy is one that tells us tale. And that's when I like uh, Ray and his storyteller mode so this fits is my number four okay and that was the, that was the second one of the arista years in 1978 so uh your number four then matt i'm going with low uh, budget going with low budget and honestly it's closer to my numbers five and six than it would be my three two and one so i mean mm. state of confusion word of mouth and low budget it could switch honestly tomorrow, but that's just kind of how I'm feeling right now. The two songs that I would save to put on a best of, um, I would go with Attitude and I would go with uh, Catch Me Now I'm Falling despite the Jumping Jack Flash um, ripoff. I was considering Wish I Could Fly Like Superman, but I just feel I like those first two songs better. So you're getting a theme from me here. I'm going with a lot of the first couple songs on each album but I it's, mean, funny with Super, it's funny with superman actually because i think the reason why i um like that as a track is because i've seen it i've seen them play it live on youtube so many mm -hmm. times and it's really rocked up really played, uh, i think it's kind of played better than it is on the album and that kind of influences that track for me so um yeah i like that track but okay attitude and catch me now i'm falling Right, okay. So my number four would be word of mouth. And um, this this is a little bit funny one for me because with our 12 songs and our best off, my opener on my album is Do It Again. I, I think that is absolutely an immense track. I just think it's so great. I love playing that track. I think it's fantastic. I think I think the interesting thing about it as well is that um, is with word word of mouth. Bob Hendrick, the new drummer, came along post Mick Avery, and uh, I think a lot of these really big drum songs like "Do It Again," "Word of Mouth," um, "Too Hot," I think are very influenced by the big drums of, of Bob Hendrick. So. Um, do it again, 
fabulous track for me and living on a thin line the the dave davis one which um i know he, he's he, he's he's done in concert for many many years now on his solo tours but i think that's a fantastic track i think there are quite a few good tra- i do like this album actually and yeah. um it's funny for me with slow confusion and low budget they're a little bit adrift at number six and five this one is pretty close to my number three and then my one and two are interchangeable so it's, <laughs> it's funny how these things how these things pan out but um yeah word of mouth number four for me do it again and living on a thin line okay so we're down to matt swing over to matt yeah for a match number three all right i'm gonna be uh taking one off the board for the first time for all of us and i'm going with uh give the people what they want uh i mean of the stadium rockers, this is clear in a way the best one. I just don't think it is as good as those first two Arista albums, which are a little bit more album oriented, but so many great songs, really hard to choose because I think this is a great album for, for this style of kinks, it is the gold standard. And uh, the two songs I'm gonna keep, uh, I'm gonna keep around the dial. I, the kinks just have a real penchant for having a real cracker of an opening track on Ooh, all of these yeah, albums. For sure. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I'm going with that. And then um, my second track, I guess I'll go with a lot of good ones. They're all kind of in that same. I'm going to go with better things. I I know that was not a song that Mike liked, I remember, or didn't like as much, if I'm not mistaken, from when we did it. But I just think it's a great song. It it makes me feel good. Okay. Great stuff. And Jacob? Also, in the middle, uh, give the people what they want. Uh, and I am going to pick better things. I'm the one who also loved that. It's part of my number one track uh, on the album. Uh, Mike's the outlier of the three of us. I love those jangly guitars. It's a little, maybe, maybe it's a little bit Pretenders uh, influence, honestly, now that I hear it. Uh, and I think I compared it to like a proto replacements or something at the time, but I'm like, yeah, no, that's very Pretendersy. And uh, the other track, I think I'm going to give it to a little bit of abuse. Uh, it's, again, it's the storyteller. Um, creating a character has a damn good hook. So uh, I know where I'm the outlier, but when it comes to the middle here, um, Matt and I are lockstep. Let's see if Mike also put it in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly the same kinds. Um, hardest rock, as you, as you say, Matt, it's the hardest rock album, the, the Edges album. Recorded at Conk in London, but also um, Power Station in New York. New York, but great tracks on the album. I mean, as you say, the opener around the dial, and um, the Kinks for quite a long time opened with that in their stage show as well. Give the people what they want. Killer's Eyes, put it, add it up. Yo Yo, back to front. some really great tracks on the album. Yo, yeah. <laughs> Better Things is such a funny track for me because um, I kind of don't dislike it, but I. It just doesn't get me. And I think mm. I mentioned before that, um, I mean, Bruce is my favourite individual artist. And I've got um, the Ray Davis See My Friends album, which, which he does collaborations with Metallica and various bands. And that particular album opens up with um, a collaboration with, with Ray Davis and Bruce on Better Things. So I really should warm to it more, <laughs> but for some reason I don't. So yeah. my two tracks, what I decided to do with this one, because it's the hard rock album, um, I've gone with two of the hardest rock ones. I've gone with Around the Dial and Give the People What They Want. Give the... I was hoping you'd do Yo-Yo, but... <laughs> yeah, we <should> have... yeah. <laughs> Just to drive Matt crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Yo-Yo is great, but I, I like it. But, yeah, yeah. I don't mind Yo-Yo. But no, it's a strong... <laughs> well, it's number three of the Aristi years, so it's it's well up there, isn't it? So, good. 1982. Fantastic. Okay, things are really hotting up now, then. Well, I know oh. what your two members. Well, I guess I know what everyone's is, but uh, <laughs> if it's my turn, I'll just get it out of the way because I'm the only one who put this any higher. Uh, and it's definitely a sentimental favorite. I, I didn't talk about it in, in any of the videos, but uh, I think I told you two that uh, this is the first of the records I listened to because a friend had lent, lent me the CD. So decades before I'd heard the other ones, uh, I 
maybe decades. Yeah, okay, decades. Woo. Um, I had listened uh, to this, and so there's not a skipper on it for me, even though I know it, there are tracks that are weaker than other tracks. But I couldn't give it the number one uh, in all. On, like I just couldn't. Like I couldn't justify that. But uh, yeah, I like it more than you two. I, and I had a hard time picking because I know all these songs and I like all these songs. I went with Attitude um, to save because it's good. Again, great opener, good rocker. And I love both Catch Me Now and Falling and Wish I Could Fly Like Superman because they are about super, well, they mentioned superheroes anyway, but I have to go with Superman because they say Superman a lot in that. <laughs> <laughs> and sure it, it's, it's a goofy disco track. And if, I, I wasn't actually thinking about how it would flow as a record, but it would add a little variety to my my desert island kinks album and so, this this was obviously the, the biggest selling album of this period for the kings i've got to number 11 on the us billboard so you know, if the public agreed jacob yeah. yeah they gave the people what they wanted which was i don't know rockers yeah, yeah. wrong Basically. album i don't know what i'm talking about let's do matt's number two is it misfits or is it uh, so, number two let's build, let's build it up ah yeah, I, I mean, bear, it's it's barely number two. It could be number one. I really love yeah. this album, though. I just, I think it's fantastic. And so the title track, it's my definite first pick. Now, the second pick was a little challenging because I love three songs almost equally. I almost, right before we started recording, was going to pick the, the final track, Get Up, because I think that is just an amazing mm -hmm. song. And maybe that's like the biggest Dark Horse arista song because it's just fantastic but i didn't go with it i didn't go with rock and roll fantasy like like jacob which it's a great song as well i decided to go with black messiah that song to me is just incredibly fun such I, a groove great groove, such as well. a groove. And, and you know i generally don't like a reggae song done by a non-jamaican band for example jamaica off of houses of the holy by led zeppelin that song yeah. annoys the hell out jamaica. Of me. It really yeah. annoys me but this yeah. song for whatever reason it, it hits all of the buttons that I want. And uh, I just, I think it's fantastic. I, it, it, it's, it's my, uh, it's my second pick off of Misfits. Yeah. It's grown on me since we've recorded uh, the last time, but yeah, I wouldn't have picked it, <laughs> but that's good for you. All right. This will determine if we all have the same number one, Mike. Okay. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Wouldn't it? Couldn't possibly happen. Um <laughs> It's funny as well with Misfits, just some of the notes I scribbled there, which I mentioned last time, was that with Misfits, where it is kind of a really, I think, both Sleepwalker and Misfits, very, a very warm production, really easy listening, nice, nice productions kind of thing. But Misfits, there was four bass players on it because of the turmoil going on in the band. There was, there was three drummers on it. Andy Powell, bass player, John Goslin left during it, but it's still kind of a very warm album. And my number two is Misfits. Yeah, Misfits. Um, when, when I did my ranking video um, five, six months ago, I think this was a little bit of a way down the list. I can't remember where now. Since we've been doing our exercise and I've listened to it more than ever, um, I just so got into this album. I, th I think it's a fantastic album. I, I really love it. Misfits title track, fantastic. Black Messiah, Hay Fever doesn't do it for me, which is one of the reasons why it's not number one. Black Messiah, superb. Rock and Roll Fantasy, great. In a Foreign Land, great track. Permanent Waves, great track. Um, Live Life, almost one of my selections. Out of the Wardrobe, the you know, Latter Day Lola. What a what a fun what a fun track. You know, just really good fun. Um, Trust Your Heart, again, a low point for me. Dave Davis song, fantastic outro, I like that. And Get Up, which, yeah, as I said before, that Springsteen, outro, uh, early Springsteen outro, fantastic. So really, really good song. And right about that appearance, obviously, the wonderful Father Christmas is knocking around as well, which is fantastic. But my two tracks are Misfits, Full House, and um, but I've, I've gone with Rock and Roll Fantasy, because that's another track which has grown on me so much. And um, what I would encourage folks to, to have a look at on YouTube, if you haven't seen it already, I came across it a short while ago, is on YouTube there's this clip, and it's called um, Rock and Roll Fantasy Kings Hotel Room. And basically it's just before a gig, and you've got 
Ray, Dave and Jim Rodford in a hotel room. Ray and Dave are just both on acoustics and they play rock, um, rock and roll fantasy acoustically and Jim Rodford's on the on the bass plugged in. Kind of but it's absolutely superb. It's such a fantastic version of it. I really wish the Kinks would have done an acoustic album of some of their all acoustic. You know, I think that would have been really good. But um, fantastic album, really good. Misfits, rock and roll fantasy for me. Okay. So uh, no. since we all have the same number one, should we That's all just amazing. pop it up? Should we all just pop it up at once? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Yeah. They peaked early. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with the restart. Is it, uh, isn't it good? I mean, is that because Clive Davis really spent a lot of time with um, Ray Davis at the time and kind of they were going through demos and so a lot of quality came out in the songwriting. You know, the standard was even higher than normal. I don't know. Um, I know that with the Arrest of Money, they improved Conk and made it a state-of-the-art studio it had existed during the theatrical period i mean preservation number no. one was the first studio to use was the first recording to be recorded in conch studios the king's own studio but with the with the arista period they updated state of the art so and again because i think the production on this is just so warm and consistent right across the album whereas i think some of the others six and five kind of thing i think some of the production is a little bit kind of disjointed but this and Misfits are such lovely albums to listen to for me, start to finish. Even even the lesser tracks, they they roll really lovely. But uh, I don't think there's a skipper on this one, so that's why, I, yeah, I had to have it number one. And maybe all our tastes just skew more towards seventies trends in music versus eighties, which you know, as it goes, clearly gets more into that. Yeah. But and this is and this is seventy seven. So okay, Jacob. So two tracks. Uh, I saved the title track. Sleepwalker, though I could have easily done Life on the Road or Mr. Big Man or Brother. I'm just reading these off. These are all great stuff. Uh, and uh, the second one I did, uh, Jukebox Music. Um, but honestly, yeah, it, it was a, this was the hardest call. So that's yeah. why it was an easy number one. How interesting. Yeah. Matt? Yeah, this is, this is very difficult. Too many good songs. Mm. Too many decisions. I considered Life Goes On. I think that's a fantastic song. I considered um, Full Moon. I think that's a great song. Mm. I I think Stormy Sky, even though I think I described it as kind of a Paul McCartney type of ripoff. I think it's a song. Yeah. Well, there's really only, uh, I think, one song on it. Well, Brother's okay. I, I don't hate, hate on Brother. I know I didn't <laughs> like it as much as you guys. But I think really only Sleepless Night is the only real kind of turkey on here. But... Mm. Uh, I'm gonna go life on the road. I just think that song is just a one, just a crescendo. I mean, it just it starts at, at a piano dynamic, and then by the end, it's just it's mm. it's rocking. And even though it's kind of a strophic type of song, there's not a lot of new uh, melodies introduced throughout it. Just what they can do and spin that same melody and make it exciting every verse. I just think that's great. Uh, uh, it's either between Sleepwalker and Jukebox music. Um, I'm gonna give it the jukebox music. I think Sleepwalker was my favorite initially, but um, yeah, I'm gonna give it to, to jukebox jukebox music. Mm, okay, and uh, for me, kind of quite heavily influenced by I've seen that old Grey Whistle Test television clip many many times where they played a lot of songs from this, and they do an absolutely fantastic version, which I've just seen a million times of Life Goes On. And so I'm just so taken with that track. Just the narrative that goes through it and, and the, the the pace of it, the rhythm. I just find it a fantastic song. And the other one, which, sorry, Matt, it's still a fantastic track for me, Brother. Such a great track. In my best of, top of that would sit right in the middle. Of, that would probably close my first side on a vinyl album. That would be track six, side one. <laughs> but... What, a, what an absolutely fantastic album. I did toy with Jukebox Music because that is a terrific track. I mean, that, it just really kicks. Great guitar work in it from Dave, Ray Davis, um, Dave Davis. Stormy Sky, superb. Yeah, Life on the Road, great track. Sleepwalker, superb. 
What a what a superb album. Really, really good. And the first one in, uh, with Aristus, as you say, you know, they start off so well during that period. Oh, fantastic. So I've recorded it. So if I understand my scribbles, so basically number six for me, State of Confusion, Jacob State of Confusion, Matt Word of Mouth. Number five for me, Low Budget. Uh, word of mouth for Jacob, state of confusion for Matt. Number four, word of mouth for me, misfits for Jacob, low budget for Matt. Number three, give the people for all of us. We all we all went with give the people. Um, number two, misfits for me, misfits for Matt, low budget for Jacob. And number one, the uh, the fabulous plus one, Sleepwalker. Wonderful. That's our. Uh, <laughs> hope you enjoyed that, folks. That's our um, assessment of those six wonderful studio albums of the Arista years of the Kinks, and uh, check them out. Just fantastic albums.